Okay, for 10a, we have a piecewise function. And so first I asked you to do these first four steps, and then afterwards it asks us to graph it. So let's do this, this part first. Now piecewise, basically it's a, a function that's made up of different pieces, but each of these pieces have a condition statement on it. So that means that, the, for instance, this first equation, 3 plus x, we're only going to use that if we're plugging in values between negative 3 and 0. So if we don't have numbers between negative 3 and 0, we're not going to use that first one. If x is 0, so only when x is 0, we get 3 as our result. So it's basically, this is just a point, 0, 3 is what you get. And the last one, the square root of x, you only use that when x is greater than 0. So piecewise, you have to make sure you follow the conditional statements that are on the end. So we have to follow those when we do these problems here. You look at the number that's inside the parentheses and you see which one of these uh, that would be included. Okay, so for this f of 0, we're only going to have that, uh, we're only going to get 3 for our answer because it says whenever x is 0, automatically our answer is 3. So there's nothing, nothing to plug in uh, for that one. Uh, your answer is automatically going to be 3. Next, we're going to do f of negative 3 halves. So negative 3 halves, that would be a number between negative 3 and 0. Decimal-wise, that's negative 1.5. So that would fall in between this. So it means that you'd only work for the, it would only work for the top one. And by the way, the way this works is because it is considered a function, you're never going to have a case where you'll have two equations to put something into. Because then if you have two different equations to put something into, it's not going to be a function. So for piecewise, you will only have one equation for every single number that it will belong to. So negative 3 halves would only belong to the top one. So I'm going to do 3 plus x, so 3 plus negative 3 halves. So I'm subtracting that. Uh, so I'm going to do uh, 6 halves, and that would be minus 3 halves, and then you get 3 halves as the answer. So f of negative 3 halves, you'll get uh, positive 3 halves. Let's jump down here to 9. f of 9. 9 is greater than 0, so you would use the bottom one. That's square root of 9, which is going to give you 3. So 3 would be your answer for uh, part C. And then D, we have f of negative 4. Okay, so negative 4 does not fit with the top equation because it only goes up to negative 3. Uh, negative 4 is not equal to 0, so we can't use this one. And negative 4 is not greater than 0, so we can't use this one either. So this is a case where that number doesn't work with any of these. So for this, uh, you would say undefined or no solution, something like that, uh, you would have. So these are the answers. So again, the answer for A is 3. For B, it's 3 halves. C is 3. And D is going to be undefined. So now we have this complete. We'll go ahead and erase this. And we're now going to go into the graph. Now, for the graph on these, what I recommend doing is making tables uh, for each of the different functions that you have. Well, this one, the second one, we don't need to make a table because all it is is plotting a point zero three. So let's we'll do that last. Let's let's work with the first one and the last one. Now, uh, if you have x raised to the first power, then you have a line, and so for lines, you only have to look at uh, two points. So two points will determine a line. Now in this case, when we're making our table here, we have y equals 3 plus x. I want to use always the numbers that are on the end of the conditional statement. Now yes, even though, we, even though 0 is not included, we don't have an equal sign underneath, I still want to plot that one. That just means that when I plot where the 0 is, I'll have an open circle there at that point. But I want to make sure I I put that in because that's going to be the, my starting point and ending point for my line. So I'm going to do negative 3 and 0. I'm just going to do the endpoints on that, the ones I'll test. I put negative 3 into here, and we get 0. So if I make an x and a y chart right there, I get uh, negative 3, comma 0 for our point. If we put 0 in there, 3 plus 0 gives us 3, so 0, 3 then would be the other one. So 
What's that going to look like as far as the graph is concerned? So now let's take a look at the, the graph. So what I have here is I have negative 3, 0. I'm going to plot. So negative 3, 0. Now that's going to be a closed circle because there's an equal sign there attached to negative 3. The other one, 0, 3, that's going to be an open circle and I'll draw a line like this. So open circle on that one because the zero was not included. But notice the reason why I did that again is I want to make sure that I know where the line ends. So even though the point is not included there at zero, I still want to go ahead and mark that so that way I have a place where my line is going to end. So that way I know where it's going to be drawn at. So that, this would take care of the first equation. Now let's look also, let's jump down to y equals square root of x. Okay, so for this one, again, the zero would be not included. However, I still want to go ahead and start with that one anyway. It'll be an open circle, but at least it'll tell me where the graph begins. So I'll put a zero in here. So square root of zero is zero. So for my coordinate, I get uh, zero, zero, and that's going to be an open circle there at that point. But then I want to just pick some other point. So any other point that it's, that's uh, greater than zero, it doesn't matter which one you want to use. Let me use, I'm going to use like, I'll use four. Square root of four is two, and I get four, two. I could have picked one and done a one, one as well. So I wanted to do that one. It's always good actually to try at least two or three, at least three points. If it's not linear here, if you, if you just did zero, zero, which would be open, and if you just did 4, 2, like this, um, the mistake would be you may just go ahead and draw a line like that. But that's not what this graph looks like. So instead of just doing two points, it's good to pick a third point. So let's just go ahead and use that one. Let's use a 1. Square root of 1 equals 1 here. And we get 1, 1. Okay. So now, if we put a 1, 1 in there, now we see it's not going to be a straight line. Now we got some kind of curve that's going like that. And it's going to keep on going this way. Uh, and so, if you have something that is not linear again, so if it's not, if you don't have a, a 1 on top of the x, if it's square root or square or something like that, make sure you pick at least three points because you don't want to make the mistake of connecting it and thinking it's a straight line. So, it's, that's only going to be the case if you have x to the first power where you can pick uh, two points. So this right here would be your uh, would be the first equation and the third equation. Now we haven't done the second one yet. Now the second one, it says that when x is zero, y is three. What this is going to do is this is going to plug up the hole that we had at zero three before. Remember that this was open when we first uh, graphed that one. However. What this second equation does is it basically fills up that hole. So this is what your final answer will look like. You're going to have two closed dots here, and the only one that's open now will be the one at 0, 0 for square root x.